Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Joe with Crypt of Classics, hosted on here by House of the Unusual. And today we are going to be checking out this comic zine magazine from 1971. It's the, uh, the first issue. The magazine previously was Nostalgia Collector. Uh, it was published bi-monthly. The editor was Leroy... Zidic, hope I'm pronouncing that right. So we're gonna take a look and see what what goodies are in this issue. I just received this in the mail not too long ago, and I when I first got it, I flipped through it a little bit, but I really didn't get a chance to um, kind of go real deep into it. I wanted to wait to do this video to kind of be surprised with you guys to see what's going on in here. So looks like our first page here we have comic book price guide uh, first edition and then we have some uh, ooh, lone ranger stuff everyone loves the lone ranger looks like some old stuff from the serial and then we have our, our regular you know stuff that's usually in the the old magazines and and comic fanzines to get your your subscription so i'm not sure how long this magazine actually went for i was only able to find one copy of the first edition, number one, uh, I have not been able to find any other edition. So if you're on YouTube and you have seen, you know, two, three, four, or any other ones, uh, drop us a line in the comments, let us know. And if you know how long this magazine ran for, let us know as well. I see they have um, a 14 issue subscription. So I don't know if it actually went 14 issues or if it went, you know, seven, eight issues and then it was canceled. So if you have any information on this magazine, this fanzine, drop us a line in the comments. All right, so we have, looks like the Batman and Robin serial. Beautiful poster here. I, I love, absolutely love the artwork of these old posters from the serials. It's it's nothing computer generated. It is just it's pure art. So they give you the cast and credits of the serial and a little bit of information on it. it. Looks like a review. Not sure who the editor is or the the writer on this one. So pretty interesting. We got some more photos uh, from the serial. In if there's any serial fans out there, you always know there's always in the enemy's lair. There's one guy who's who's standing at the head of the table with all his henchmen around him. No different during the Batman serial. And I love this old Batman costume. This is one of my favorite ones from the serial. With the, it just looks like a, a regular costume. Of course, you know it wasn't done very well back then due to monetary restrictions. The budgets weren't that that high in serials. You know they were made pretty cheap and pretty quick just to get kids into theaters. You know each week to watch the main movies. But this is still one of my favorite uh, costumes right there of Batman. All right, some more information on the the serial. Uh, again, another one of these beautiful artwork uh, posters. Again, we got the costume, just absolutely fantastic. And then we have a breakdown of each chapter on this page. So this one's covering the first six chapters. We've got nine through 15 here with a few screenshots. Looks like Batman was drugged or something there. It's been a while since I've seen this serial, so I can't really remember what happened in it. Maybe it's a good time to, to review it and, and head back and watch it. So it looks like it was a 15-chapter serial. I actually think I have this book here, uh, The Serials by Raymond Stedman. I, I'm almost positive somewhere in the in the collection of vast serial books that I have 
I wonder if he's related to the Eric Stedman that's currently doing the cereal squadron that's uh, reproducing all the cereals with you know nice high quality blu-ray and such puts out a few books each year so if anybody has any information on that if anybody knows uh, Raymond William Stedman if that's Eric Stedman's uh, any type of relationship to him that'd be a little cool information to find out again here's some of the beautiful artwork and flipping initially flipping through the magazine that kind of seemed like that was it for any type of information now getting into this section of the the magazine until the end for some of the our, our younger viewers that might not maybe might not realize this and some of our older viewers that forgot about it like myself initially I started looking through this is you got to think back 1971 there was no internet you know you didn't have eBay um, comic cons and shows were, were a scarce thing they, they were just in their infancy starting to get a lot bigger so collectors had to rely on things like these fanzines to get their information and to find out you know people that were selling stuff that they were interested in so what you have for the rest of these pages now are people selling stuff. And you got to think back to 1971. You know, if you wanted something, you better hope you could find it in the magazine and, you know, get a hold of that person selling it before somebody else, you know, grabbed it. So you have some cool little ads here. You know, somebody selling Golden Age comics out of Wisconsin. You know, some more Golden Age comics here. Boy, wouldn't it be nice to get some of these uh, books that cost a fortune now. Some Karloff uh, one-sheet movie posters. Looks like someone's looking for those. You know, so on top of putting classified ads in newspapers, you know, people were able to get a hold of these fanzines and some of the more mainstream magazines to put in their their ads whether they wanted something or were looking uh, to sell something so here's a few more uh, looks like you know this guy's he wants some steals lobbies posters scripts press books or 16 millimeter prints sherlock holmes of the cinema so this looks like his little want list more uh, lobby cards one sheets and posters for sale I gotta wonder if some of these people are still in business or if they're still around collecting um, if you're if you happen to be watching this video and you are in this magazine this fanzine and you have an ad in here drop us a line on the bottom and and let us know what's up more posters i mean look at the prices on some of these posters now i mean they're going for you know tens of thousands of dollars and how cheap they are at this time some 16 millimeters you know some of the beautiful artwork while from the people you know putting in these ads sending in their own drawings First annual witchcraft and sorcery convention, October 22nd to 25th. That looks like that might have been something really cool. Uh, Force J. Ackerman, Ray Bradbury. The wildest horror, fantasy, and comic book convention ever. I wonder how long that lasted. It's the first time I've ever heard of that one. So the first annual... Hopefully it went on for a, for a long time. And we still got some more, you know, comic books people looking for, looking to sell. More movie posters. A lot of movie posters in this one. But I mean, just look at the prices on some of these.
Moleman and John Agar, 250 for 14 by 36. Wish I could go back in time and grab a few of these. Lobby, I absolutely love lobby cards. And I mean, some of them, the real good ones, especially the Universal Monster ones, are extremely hard to find and extremely expensive. And yeah, I bet you they're in here for, for decently priced. Superman and the Mole Men. Tarzan and the Ape Man, another one I'd like to, to try to find. Ride of the Monster. Anything with Bella Lugosi is okay with me. Some press books. Press books are usually pretty uh, easy to find. I have a, a bunch of those. I've I found at conventions on eBay. Uh, bought off of different collectors. So they're they're still around. They're still decently priced. Some monster horror photo cards. There's just a ton of ton of posters in this one, but maybe that's what people wanted at the time. That's pretty interesting. There's a uh, the Sports Collectors Gazette ad in here. But you know, at the time, 70s sports cards were, were getting very big as well. Where are radio premiums and comic character items for sale? Now that's somebody I would have definitely got a hold of. Send two dollars and receive frequent auction lists of rare radio and comic character items. So you actually had to send money just to get a list of what was for sale, and then spend more money to buy it. I mean, we're lucky we're living in the age of all this free stuff. Well, not necessarily free, but a lot of free information. Comics wanted. Wanted Elvis Presley memorabilia. Still a lot of a lot of big Elvis fans out there. I mean look at some look at this. Daredevil number one going for three dollars and fifty cents. Wouldn't that be nice to get? Some early action comics, twenty-five cents. Marvel DC Golden Age for sale. Some more ads. Ooh, the Lon Chaney Portfolio. A collection of 18 illustrations of the late Lon Chaney. That. Ooh. Might have to try to find that. Anything Lon Chaney and anything horror. Definitely up my alley. And then Classic Film Collector. Formerly 8mm Collector. If you guys haven't seen any of these or if you do run into them seek them out grab them that is a great publication with a lot of great information on it uh, they're pretty easy to find they're they're still around kirk allen the original superman and that's it and we got a nice back cover here of the batman the golden age and that's pretty much it on this one uh, like I said, it was very, very short. So we were, we had up to page, looks like maybe up to page 12 of just information. So we had information going from page 4 to 12. And then everything after that from 13 until page 46 was nothing but ads. So like I said, at the time, you know, you had to find these publications in order to find your collectibles so if anybody has any more information on comics zine how many issues they ran where to find these other issues drop us a line in the comments don't forget to hit the subscribe button also head over on instagram check out house of the unusual also check out on instagram crypt of classics Two great pages there with a lot of nice photos. Also be on the lookout. You could search it through uh, Anchor, Spotify, and it'll soon be on Apple uh, Podcasts. We have House of the Unusual Podcast. It's a weekly podcast where me and Eddie talk about pretty much whatever. Just uh, UFOs, comic books, mail order mysteries, horror stuff. It, it's a lot of fun. It's just two guys 
sitting down and having a conversation. Uh, sometimes we have a special guest on there, surprise guest, to uh, talk about their love for everything pop culture. Finally, don't forget to head over to houseoftheunusual.com. Uh, check out the items we have there for sale. We also have a form site there. Go ahead and join the form and connect with people that have the same interests as you. So, enjoy uh, the last view of this cover, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye.